Good afternoon and welcome to Lymphoma, Lymphoma, <laughs> Lymphoma Blog 3 2023. Um, I'm a little bit tired today, but actually there's nothing untoward going on. I just didn't sleep very well, which happens occasionally. I had Shirley Bassey going around my head and my feet were cold. <laughs> so there you are. So I was catching you up on lymphoma and things to be aware of and stuff like that. So obviously because of where I am this time, I'm taking you through some of the treatments and bits and pieces. So back in June, I had a series of biopsies. And the problem with biopsies is they take time and especially, shall we say with the NHS in its current condition, fitting you in for appointments, then the time it takes for biopsies to come back. And because mine were inconclusive, we needed an extra one. Those things are very frustrating because it means your treatment plan gets delayed. And of course, by the time you know you your cancer is very active again, um, you're anxious to start getting treated and better. Not only because you want to be treated and better, but you want the end game when you are better to be nearer rather than further away. The other thing that happens with someone like me is that for instance, 10 years ago, I was put on a chemotherapy um, mix called RCHOP. Now, every chemotherapy mix is different and it's different for different types of cancers. RCHOP, the key thing uh, that is actually common to both types of chemotherapy that I'm currently having is a drug called rituximab. Rituximab is one of many and new drugs that are emerging that are monoclonal indicators. And this is one of the reasons why blood cancers are far, far more treatable than they ever used to be. At one time, if you can imagine you've got blood floating around your body and there's cancer in it, there was no way of targeting it as you can with radiotherapy or surgery or stuff like that. So it was much harder to treat. Now these drugs actually send up a little flag that goes, hello, chemo, come and get me, and makes it therefore, in terms of my underlying condition, far more treatable. And when you have these episodes, if they unfortunately happen, as they have with me, of higher grade cancers, um, it makes them potentially much more treatable too. So now, so I was on RCHOP, that was chemotherapy for six rounds once every two weeks and that was pretty much it and that was 10 years ago when there was no COVID around bits and pieces. The rituximab of course is less effective the more you use it but I haven't had to have any in between but they changed the rest of the cocktail so it's something like CGD now, RCGD and um, this is so that it is as effective as it can be and not the same as before and um, therefore in some ways it's like going through a completely different system because you don't know how you're going to react to any of it. Um, I know how I reacted bef before, I looked well, I kind of uh, bounced back in between each times. There were pretty much no complications. Um, this time has been slightly different um, instead of two weeks in between, I have three weeks in between my treatments. Instead of six treatments, they're doing um, uh, four before there's something more complicated, which I'll tell you about later. And um, those kind of three stages are very different. Last time it was just one drug administered once every two weeks. This time it's supposedly two sets of drugs um, so cycle one would be drug one, one week, drug two, week two, drug three, week off where you see the consultant. And that would go for three times round it was supposed to be originally. After drug one, the first time round this time, um, my platelets, which are things that are in your blood and uh, help you to uh, your immunity and your fatigue levels and all kinds of incredible things dropped to 68 and this meant that I wasn't strong enough therefore to have the second drug on this first time round. I was reassured immediately by the staff that that was normal and um, it can happen to a lot of people not to worry about it. And in fact, if it happened the second time round, that wasn't necessarily disastrous either. 
um, and they just keep checking your blood and bits and pieces to check you're okay. So that was disappointing because you kind of think, oh, well, I just want to be fine. Uh, but uh, these things are set to try you and that was round one. So that's just to catch you up with what happened at the beginning of this. I'm never going to make these vlogs too long because I know they can be quite hard to watch and digest, but that tells you the beginning, first chemo round, different types of drugs for very different reasons and this will happen whatever type of cancer if any of you or your loved ones are diagnosed with and um, and your recovery rates depend on your physique and all kinds of stuff. I'm generally quite fit but it still means you can have um, you know moments when things don't go quite as you want. All right see you tomorrow thanks bye.